Hello, this is Yaakov Kronenberg from Jerusalem, and tonight another class in the series of classes on Scorpio Ascendant and Mars and the different signs. Tonight we're doing Mars in Gemini. Uh, another interesting combination. Um, uh, when you have Mars in Gemini with the Scorpio Ascendant, for the most part, the, the, the Mars will fall in the 8th house. The 8th house is the house of death. Uh, I, just before we go into it, you know, you know, every one out of every twelve people is going to have their ruler falling in the eighth house, and so don't, you know, don't get worried that you know that that's going to be your, uh, you know, that that's, uh, you know, right away the people think they're going to die. You know, I, I, I actually have Mars in the eighth house. I know lots of people. Tonight we're going to do. Uh, a chart of a man who has Mars in the eighth house in Gemini, uh, and it's um, does not not indicative of. Uh, don't think it's not indicative of a long life. He's in his mid seventies already, late seventies, and he's still alive and going strong. So um, it just means that a person is connected uh, uh, connected with eighth house affairs. Eighth house affairs not only rules death but it rules other people's money, it rules sexuality, it rules pregnancy for women, uh, it rules uh, it rules uh, psychology, mysticism, um, uh, any like, you know, like deep, deep uh, mystical type of studies. And so it rules a lot of different things, and a person who has the ruler in that house is going to have those in your name come, those things come to the forefront in his life. And so when you have Mars there, Mars is naturally the ruler. You have to remember when you have Mars, uh, excuse me, when you have uh, Scorpio on the first house, Gus, so Scorpio is the natural ruler of the eighth house. So right away, when you see Scorpio as the ruler of the eighth house, you think of, on the ascendant, you think that right away the person's going to be connected with eighth house affairs, not even looking where the Mars is. Then when you see Mars in the eighth house, so that'll like be a double indication that that um, the eighth house will be uh, strong in the person's um, life. And the eighth house also rules changes. Changes. I think that's uh, the Indian astrologers hold that it rules changes, and that's like death is the the change. You know, the major change where you go from this world to the next world. And in a certain way, the uh, people are very don't like changes, so they they it's put together there with the eighth house. And so, a person who have eighth house strong will go through a lot of changes. Um, and what else can I say? So here, so here you have a person with Mars and uh, in Gemini in the eighth, uh, with with a Scorpion ascendant, which is connected with the eighth. So all eighth house affairs will be very strong in a person's lifetime, in his, in his or her's career. And Mars and Gemini, of course, Gemini is. Uh, is an intellectual sign. It's a sign of writing, of communicating, and so a person's going to just by having Mars in Gemini, there's going to be an interest in communicating, in writing, in speaking, in 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 connecting people, in in bridging uh, differences between people. All sorts of things like that are Gemini by nature. It's interest in study, in acquiring knowledge. These are all very important attributes of Mars. Mars, uh, actually, Mars is a deep, a deep student, and uh, Mars likes to do things deeply. And so you have Gemini there; it gives you an interest uh, to investigate deeply in in learning, which is, um, of course, there. Yeah, the Mars, a bad Mars. Mars and Gemini can be a liar. You always have to look at the Mars and Gemini. If it's severely afflicted, the person could have problems with lying because the, um, Gemini is speech and Mars perverts things. Mars has a tendency to pervert things. And so it could it could cause um, a problem in the speech. 
uh, but it also gives, uh, like I said, it, it, yeah, that that already is, uh, or it could be the opposite. It could be a person who loves to expose, who expose liars. You know, somebody who who does work like that. Um, I really, Yeah, um, so it could be somebody who, like, exposes lie is somebody who loves to debate. Mars and Gemini is really good for debaters, right? Because Mars likes to fight, and they like to fight in the speech to convince people of their right, right and wrongs. But in any case, as long as we're talking about writing and stuff, I, I want to do the chart of a famous uh, songwriter, actor... Uh, who actually wrote all his songs. He wrote one of the few, most writers don't write all their songs. He wrote all this. Most songwriters don't write all their songs. They, they sing them, but they, they don't necessarily write them. So he, he sang songs and he also wrote them. And so let's look at his chart. He was, um, his name is Chris, Chris Stafferson. And he was big in the 60s, the 70s. I don't know. I haven't heard of him. I don't know. Maybe 30 years. But uh, I was looking for a chart. I found his chart. And uh, it's an interesting chart. He was a very, very bright person. He had a, he graduated college. He got a degree. A, he got a scholarship to go to Oxford. And he studied there for a few years. And... Um, you look at his chart, you see right away, you just take a quick a glance at his chart, you see he's got his ruling planet there, Mars and Gemini, together with uh, Venus is exactly conjuncted, almost exactly conjuncted, also in Gemini, and also Mercury is there in Gemini. So he's got three planets in the, uh, there together in Gemini, so the Gemini, Mercury is an honor in Gemini, and so you see the great interest in writing, an interest in learning, interested in communication. And you see his great artistic ability by having the moon, excuse me, by having Venus conjunct the ruling planet. Well, we talked about that a lot already. When you have Venus conjunct the ruling planet, there's going to be an artistic ability. And right, and so he's very bright, though. If you look at his chart quickly, you see those three planets in Gemini opposed the... Uh, very loose opposition with uh, Jupiter, also in a, an intellectual sign, and Saturn and Neptune, also in intellectual signs, in the mercurial signs of Pisces and Virgo. So he's got six out of ten planets in intellectual signs, so it made him very bright and very interested in, in learning, especially his ruling planet in Gemini. Um... So he was also in the army. He came from a family that actually was very uh, military type family, which may, maybe could be again the eighth house influence. You know, Scorpio rising, Mars in the eighth house. His family was very militaristic type of family, and they wanted him to go into uh, to have a career in the army, which he tried to do, and actually was he was fairly successful. He became a helicopter pilot. Uh, and, but then he left it for his true love, which was music, and he estranged himself from his family. His family never recovered from the fact that he left the military. And if you look at his chart, what rules the family? Is the Aquarius, which makes, uh, uh, which is ruled by Saturn and Uranus. And, and he's got that Saturn there uh, almost exactly in a tight square to his ruling planet. So that, that talks about the difficulties of the uh, of his relationship with his family. Also, Uranus has opposed his his ascendant that his family opposed um, opposed him. If you look at his chart, though, right, because he has Uranus there, and he has his two tightest aspects to the to his ascendant are Uranus and Neptune, which makes him very, very uh, a person who very much wants to uh, have an unusual life. And also, his ruling planet, of course, is conjunct Venus. So there's going to be an interest in women, in relationships, and where better than in art and music to find that. 
And so I'd say he went off and, and, and pursued a, an artistic career. And I think he is probably much happier than if he went into the military, uh, if he stayed there. And so, uh, again, it's a very nice chart. And um, and again, because of that Mars, uh, Venus in the 8th, he went through a number of marriages, like Venus rules his marriage partner. And... Um, so a lot of tribulations and stuff. He had through at least three marriages, eight children. Uh, so you see that with the Mars, uh, right? The Mars is him, and uh, Venus is the marriage partner because Venus rules Taurus on the seventh house cusp. But unfortunately, he had Uranus in the seventh house cusp, which can cause split ups and breakages, especially when it square his moon. Right? Another indication of trouble with the family. Uh, but you have the moon in the 10th house. That's a person who wants to come before the public. And so I think he went in the right direction according to his chart. And I thank everybody for listening.